What's up, everybody? It is our next live stream. First, I just want to give a shout out to Dark Monk and Flow Toys. They are sponsors of Flow Tricks. They rock. Dark Monk does amazing practice chucks and fire chucks, and Flow Toys does amazing glow chucks, as you may have seen before. Also, just wanted to talk about our schedule. Where is our schedule? I'm still looking this up. Our schedule for 2018. Every Tuesday, I'm going to release a Technique Tuesday. Almost every Thursday, I'm going to try a live stream. In two weeks, I've got a gig, so I can't do it in two weeks, but I will be doing it next week. And every weekend, I'm going to be creating videos just for Patreon donors, because without them, none of this would have been possible. And with that said, let me... I'm so glad you guys are here. <laughs> can you hear me now? I did a whole bunch of talking. Can you just like go back and we can add some like kung fu uh, voiceovers? I'm not sure. It was there when your face came up and it was gone. Dang. Well, again, welcome to Flow Tricks. Something may have happened. I disconnected my camera. And then when I reconnected it, I had, I had a lot of issues with the software and I thought I fixed it. But, you know, it's a learning process. This is like the third one. Okay, good. So everyone can hear me now. So let me start over. Um, first, I was thanking the sponsors uh, because they're awesome. Flow Tricks and Dark Monk because they make awesome chucks. <clears throat> Dark Monk does fire and he does awesome training chucks like this. Awesome is my word of the day. And then also Flow Toys, they do really amazing glow chucks, which I gave away last month. And then also um, the schedule. I've already showed you the schedule. I'm going to try every Thursday to do one of these live streams pow pow it may not happen every thursday though just because i have a show for instance in two weeks and i'm so glad you guys can hear i'm kind of concerned that if once i leave this 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 space to go into the main space we may lose uh the audio again so please let me know if you if you have it and then the last thing i was saying is if you have the youtube app uh you may not really i was trying to figure out where the live stream was or where the live chat was because here's the window where you might be able to see it but the live chat is a very thin bar at the very bottom so if you are on the mobile phone and you're not sure or you're seeing people talking you see that lower right corner you see where the people are chatting you're wondering where that is just look at the bottom of your app and there should be a live chat and you just tap that once okay cool 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 okay so to get started here um, I wanted to talk about the next giveaway so we did we did uh, the Flow Toys Glow Chuck giveaway in December. And so for this month, let me see here. Hopefully this will work. I'm gonna open up the internet. Boom. Give me just a minute here. So I hope you guys can still hear me. Uh, this is this is the next giveaway. We're working with Dark Monk and they are giving away their fire nunchucks at the end of this month. So anyone that's a Patreon donor that donates $8 or more to Patreon is instantly entered. As well, uh, anyone that does the Flowtrix websites and they gather enough points, it's probably going to be at about 1,000 points this month, also has an additional entry. So there's two ways you can enter. Uh, you can be really active on the Flowtrix website or you can you can be a donor for, for Patreon. Either way, it helps, keeps the community active and thriving. And uh, let me just make sure everyone can hear. Good. <laughs> 
Also, if you have any questions at all about nunchucks, please let me know uh, because most of our live stream is going to be answering questions with the chucks. Now, I did notice someone was asking about heavy versus light chucks, and I wanted to show you something. This man, his name is John Oswald, and what he does with heavier chucks that have a very short cord, we're talking like two or three chains, is fantastic. Check this out. So he's basically spinning them on the back of his hand with rolls and exchanging them. Tell me that is just not crazy. So when you're using uh, chucks that have shorter chain, you have a little bit more control over this type of motion than with longer chain. Uh, as well as you have the weighted tips that's like fire chucks for instance are really good at that you can see that he has balls at the end of the chucks those are actually just uh, Kevlar ends which uh, adds a little bit of weight which can also keep the distribution of the momentum just rolling back and forth a little bit better this guy is a beast though I really wanted to show off John on that one I think that that's just fantastic so kudos to him all right, I'm gonna get back to chat really quick and see so uh, if anyone has any questions at all for me please feel free to ask um, otherwise, I'll just continue in talking a little bit. Um, right now, uh, I wanted to start something with live, which is uh, create a game, something I can showcase, just like how I just showcased John Oswald. So if you have a really cool video, uh, go, to the, go to the flowtricks.net website, post it up, and do a hashtag of FT Live. That's short for Flowtrix Live. Just hashtag FT Live, and we'll choose one of them and showcase it for next Thursday. So if you have a cool video or something inspiring that you think that the community would like or that we'd like to showcase on the, on the YouTube channel, go ahead and go again to flowtricks.net, hashtag FT Live, and we'll try to showcase it. Um, with that said, let me see. Can you do lateral throws? So are you talking about horizontal throws is what I'm assuming. Let me, uh, Carla Stump asked if I can do lateral throws. We're gonna go to the main and I'm gonna check again, make sure that our microphone is working. Boom. So hopefully this works. Please let me know. I can, I can see what you guys are writing. So let me know if you're not able to hear this. A lateral throw, I'm assuming, are you talking about just like horizontal throws? Like, like that? Or are we talking about Let's see, audio's good, yes, good. So uh, with lateral throws, if you're talking about horizontal throws of any kind, it's gonna require a slightly different mindset than if we're doing vertical throws. With vertical, you have this plane that's very flat that's in front of you and your hand is chasing in front, but you kind of have to think that the plane now is over your head spinning this direction. For instance, uh, if you could imagine that there's a wall, like this wall right here, I don't know if you can see, this wall is very flat, this is a plane and it's right in front of me, that would cover this, this direction. It, it's almost like there's an imaginary wall and I'm creating circles across this wall. Well, when it's over your head, you're creating the circle, but it's almost like the, the circle is the ceiling and it's really important to keep that as flat as possible. So when we're doing like throws that happen, oh, I'm, I'm getting that right. Let me just make sure here. Okay, uh, so when we're talking about like getting good horizontal motion, uh, the probably, I would say probably the number one thing to do is to try to keep the circle as flat as possible. So if I were laying on the floor and looking straight up, I would see very flat circles. The reason why we keep these circles as straight as possible is because it gives us a little bit more control when we do the lift. So a lot of times with lateral throws, when we're doing our motions, we're keeping a very long, a long circle. And then at the very last moment, we give it a lift and we open our hand. So we're here, we're doing our, we're doing like a horizontal type of motion. And then as soon as we feel it, we're gonna get our hands and we're just gonna lift straight up and open. So lift, and open. Now the catch, as this is flying in the air, the catch is also kind of different. Uh, let's just pretend like, let's just pretend like this is in the air right now and I don't have it. Um, there's, there's a lot of ways you can catch it, but my favorite way to do it is to actually chase. So my hand is reaching for this part of the chuck, but it's swinging faster than this is rotating. If you go at the same speed, you're gonna miss it. So you have to snatch it. Like that, <laughs> not like this, don't slap it. Uh, you have to grab it faster than the rotation. So a good way to start when you're working lateral throws is not to throw it as fast as you can because that requires a lot, a lot, more, uh, a lot more speed to grab, but nice and easy. So nice and easy. So you see how my circles are kind of slow, they're not too big, and then nice and slow, and then just chase it and swing across. I like to kind of, once I feel the grab, I just kind of keep taking it this direction. So hopefully that helps. Next question. 
Benyak asks, do you think there are any new tricks to be discovered? Um, definitely. I mean, the thing is, is there's always new tricks to be discovered. Like the video with John Oswald, the thing he was doing with the backs of his hand, like that was crazy. But here's the thing. Chances are someone has discovered or created it with something else. Maybe a juggler, maybe a martial artist, maybe someone else. It may not have been done specifically with chucks, maybe a baton twirler, but someone has done it somewhere else. That's a high chance that everything's been done before, just maybe not with chucks, maybe with something else. So I think a lot of times when you're coming up with your own style or your own thought, sometimes it's really good to grab outside influences, which is why I recommend, like if you want to learn double chucks, learn double staff. Because there's a lot of a lot of similar motions that can happen with both. So maybe maybe I didn't make a connection with my with two chucks, but if I if I picked up a different prop like two staffs, all of a sudden I may get the similar ideas when I'm doing the same motions. So it's really nice to uh, when you want to discover new moves or new new uh, ideas. Sometimes we get so focused and so lost in the one art that we're doing that we're actually we make ourselves stuck. So a lot of times what I like to say is get away from it. Pick up something else, do a different art, and then your ability to relate two different things together is kind of like how we create art in the first place. So if you can spin two staffs, that's amazing. Now can you apply this? Can you apply this to your chucks? Can you apply this to even just your daily life, your daily routine, you know? So the more that you can apply your techniques to other techniques, the more roundabout you will be as an artist, as well as you'll have this greater overview uh, in terms of flow. Let's see, what else do we got here? Is it the same with finger throws? Yes, it is. <laughs> Although finger throws are a lot more technical. Uh, I'm assuming you mean like if I'm doing a finger spin and I'm throwing it like so, it's a little bit harder to control because I have nothing grabbing. When I'm, when I'm spinning a chuck over my finger, I have no control as to, like when I'm doing a hand roll, I'm still grabbing it when I throw it so I have an easy release. But here, I just kind of have to feel when it's at its most secure spot. So if I'm spinning a chuck around my finger, I have to wait until it's at the most secure spot and push it up. But if I'm even off by like a fraction of a hair, it's gonna wanna it's gonna to want to like, it may fly some sort of direction, but it's kind of the same thing. You keep it as flat as possible, then you, whoop, <laughs> see, that time it hit my arm. And then you keep it as flat as possible, and then you lift it up, <laughs> and you hit the camera. So that's the trick with it. It's a, lot, it's a lot less stable when you're doing a finger spin to a throw, simply because it's rolling around your finger. There's no stability there. We don't have a way, like where we're catching it with our hand, we can control the release. With this, it's rolling around the finger. That's not to say you can't build that up. I just haven't worked on it enough to build it up. Let's see. What's up, Kushik Vandrazi? I'm really sorry. I probably really pronounced that wrong. Can you do one finger infinite? It's the wheel with one finger. No. <laughs> no, I can't. So the thing with me and nunchucks, um, I don't know all the moves for nunchucks. I just kind of go my own direction and I learn my own things. And then when I became a performer, I don't really necessarily work on some of the harder moves that are technical, but really like my end goal is to, I can kind of get it a little bit like so, but it eventually I eventually lose it. But for me, a lot of this just has to do with, uh, since I'm a performer, I'm looking for crowd pleasing moves mostly. And this one is a very technical move. I only knew a few people that could keep it going forever. But mm, not me. I saw it in the Ninja Turtles show. That was pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm going to go back to chat really quick here. So besides that, I hope everyone's doing awesome today. Oh, man. OK. So also, please keep asking requests. Oh, yeah, Levi. So there's a guy named Levi. Oh, we should probably bring up his video next time. There's a lot of in amazing, insane nunchuck spinners. Um, for myself, uh, I do a lot of different props and I also focus on performing and running a business. So I kind of divide up my time, but there's some people that just spend all day working nunchucks and they are phenomenal and crazy. So I, I think that uh, it's good to get a roundabout view and to, to find other artists that also spin chucks. 
So let me see what else we got here. I can't either, never mind. Can you do a combo with double chucks? Cool, this is perfect. Okay, we got some really good questions here. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm gonna go in order here. So where do you find music for performances? Well, I think finding a performance is harder than finding the music. Once, I mean, booking gigs is like ridiculous. But when you're, I have a guinea pig by the way, and he's squeaking. But when you're trying to find the right music for performance, I like to like look at it as how many changes are there. A lot of times, when I find a song that's like five minutes long, but it's a long droning song and there's no changes, I find that to be the hardest because basically you're just kind of keeping the same pace the whole time. There's there's really no accentuation or anything. So uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go on Spotify and I'll type in a theme or I'll go to different playlists that I like and I'll specifically look for, is there a quiet part? Is there a build up? Is there a massive drop? And then once I find something that kind of meets the, that criteria, I start building around that. So, I mean, writing out choreography can be a huge thing. I generally say, when, especially nunchucks, because you can do like three techniques in a second. You don't necessarily need to memorize every technique, but you do need to memorize when the music is at its highest point, its most dramatic point. You should have something synced in just perfect to those times where the music is really, really powerful. Make yourself just as powerful. So you might actually have about 20 seconds of actual choreographed parts, and then everything else, what I like to do is I like to break it into like themes. For instance, I might say, well, in the beginning, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna like use one hand, for instance, and I'm, I'm not gonna do any hand rolls, so that way we'll keep it nice and easy. And then as it picks up, we're gonna start adding hand rolls. And then as it picks up, we're gonna start exchanging hands. You know, so in that way we can build with the music. Um, when I'm listening to music, that's what I'm thinking about: is how can I create limitations, and then how can the music uh, move with those limitations? So that way I can create a performance and not just showcase. You know, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this kind of thing, but actual performance. Next, Carla Stump asks, can you do a combo with double checks? Now, double checks is not my forte. <laughs> But I can show you something really simple that's really good for you to learn with double chucks. There's four different basic spinning patterns with chucks, okay? Either they're both going, they're both going counterclockwise, they're both going clockwise, uh, they're going opposite directions, one going counterclockwise while the other's going clockwise, and vice versa. All of these are really important to learn. Uh, I think it's really important. So a lot of times what I'd like to see is if you can just start like this, okay? And basically if you look from the side, one hand is ahead of the other, so that way they don't crash into each other and, and stop. This is gonna be good for you to learn and I'll show you how it applies in a second. So what we're gonna do, do you, if you've done my single nunchucks, you remember hyper style, we have the number three bounce, which is underneath, and then the number two bounce, which is, which is over, it bounces off the deltoid or it bounces off the tricep. It's gonna be the same idea, except for we're gonna try to keep another nunchuck spinning. So for instance, with my right hand, I'm gonna bounce it under. Now with that one bounce, what that does is that changes the dynamics of the spin. See how they're going the same direction? If I do one number three bounce, all of a sudden they're spinning in the opposite direction. Now on the left hand, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bounce it and then I'm gonna pull it back. Now they're going the same direction again. Do you see that? Now they're both going clockwise. But then all of a sudden, if I do the number two bounce on top, it goes the opposite direction. So just remember, anytime a chuck is spinning, it's either gonna go under or it's gonna go over and you're gonna do one at a time. What this is gonna give you is access to all the different ways that you can spin the chuck. So for instance, when they're going in opposite directions, that's when people do the, the split time hand rolls like this, right? You can't always do the split time hand rolls though, only when they're going in opposite directions, uh, going upwards like this. For instance, if we're going this way, you can't do split time hand rolls upwards because it's gonna be more of an anti-spin type of thing. It's, it's near impossible, you have to be in this motion. So in the same way, if we're going in the same direction, like this, this is when you do your weaves. So if you, if you really think about how that works, uh, a really nice combo that you can do to build your combos is simply, let's say they're going in the same direction, that means you can do a weave, you pull it out, boom, you do one bounce, and now all of a sudden they're going in opposite directions, so now you can go and do your split time hand rolls. And you remember I used my right hand to bounce, so if I bounce it again, we can go back to weaves. So it's pretty cool, right? So essentially, if you just use your right hand to bounce, we're going counterclockwise both, all I have to do is bounce to change the dynamics of what I can do. And then again, we bounce it again, and we go back into the weave 
type patterns. So anytime they're going in the same direction, you're probably doing some sort of weave, whether it's whether it's a two beat, whoosh, 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 or a one beat, or a three beat, or anything like that. Any, most of the nunchucks go in weaves, or they do that split time. Now, if you're going the opposite direction, you notice how I'm going upwards with it. If you go the opposite direction, this is a very un, unusual one for chuckers to go this up opposite direction where they're actually going downwards in the center, but it's gonna be more like a downward swing like this. But this will open up a lot for you. Um, transitioning between those four, uh, whether they're going the same direction or opposite direction, and then clockwise or counterclockwise, that will open up a ton. And it'll also help you to see why you're not able to do some moves when your chucks are spinning a certain way. So kind of like that allows you to change the rules at will just by adding a bounce. You can change the rules at will for what you can do. So hopefully that helps. <sighs> All right. So let's see. Thank you, Koshik. That's, that's awesome. I have a lot of biggest fans. That's good. Mm -hmm. And what's up, section? Um, Carla wants to know if I can suggest some songs. I'm going to be honest. If you're doing a performance for like martial arts or something, like when I do a performance, a lot of times it depends on what the client wants, and then I try to find something in the middle. But I'm often, I often like high energy music, like Glitch Mob. So it's something where they don't have too much vocals. Uh, that way, it can be people can focus and not be distracted by vocals. So, like, I like electronic music a lot. So, I mean, again, off the top of my head, I, I like Glitch Mob and the old Future Primitive and things of that nature. I don't necessarily like to go too heavy because I feel like if you go into like the down and dirty dub stuff, it's you tend to lose people. But something that has explosions, explosive motion, um, a lot of electronic music, especially quite a bit of the dub stuff. Uh, I feel like it works really well, which is why you hear it a lot of times when I make my videos. Let's see. What is your favorite transition when using one chuck and then going to two? Any techniques that you use? I mean, favorite transitions with chucks is, is a tough one because it's like I have a new favorite thing that I'm doing. Like right now, I'm really big into the uh, reverse illusion rolls and then just trying to extend them. It's really quite hard because you're combining three different techniques. You're combining the ability to do a back-to-back -back with the ability to float, or with the ability to bring it down, kind of float it, with the ability to extend it in like a plus sign direction. So there's like, I'm trying to combine three different things, but I feel like it feels really good and it has like a really cool look to it. So currently that's like what I'm working on, but probably next week, I'll probably work on something else. You know how it goes. <laughs> Um, sir, you have rope nunchaku. Can you please tell me where you buy it because I face some problems with it. Sure. I mean, right now, almost all my chucks are made by Dark Monk or Flow Toys anymore. I mean, not only are they my sponsors, but they're also people that work with me exclusively so we could build a balanced chuck. So like Dark Monk especially has done many, many prototypes and different models. He's actually sending me a new prototype as we speak, like the fifth, fifth fifth different prototype, trying to find the best balance between weight and having weights at the end and the balance point, what kind of rope to use. I used to love chain a lot more, um, but I've really sold myself onto ropes just because of all the different manipulations you can do. Oops. All the different manipulations that you can do with, with rope is just really simple when you're using like finger rolls and thumb rolls. However, when I'm doing fire sometimes, this is a long shot, but when you're doing fire, there's some moves you can do with chain that you cannot do with rope. So there are some things that chain is still good for. It's, it's just like when someone asks what's the best chuck, because people ask me that a lot, the best chuck is, depends on what you're trying to do with it. It's almost like, that's like saying like, what's the best kind of person? I mean, you have big people, you have thin, skinny people that can run fast, you have big people that can lift, you know, lots of weights. It just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So when you look at chucks, Try not to look at it as this is better or this is worse, but look at it in characteristics. Think about what you're trying to accomplish and it'll make a lot more sense as to which one is good for you. And it may only be good for you at this particular time. Let's see. Um, sir, oh yeah, the rope, okay. How about threading the needle is a good one to show? Oh, sure. So thread the needle is like a butterfly. So basically, do you remember uh, when we're going upwards like this, how I was saying how you can do hand rolls, split time hand rolls. Well, if we're going the opposite direction, which is going downwards, like I was showing you before, I said this isn't done very much with uh, checkers, 
but it also sets you up for something called the butterfly, which you basically take your two hands together, one hand is slightly in front of the other, that way it causes them not to crash into each other, and we kind of create a circle and we bounce our hands at the same time, we lock it in like this. This is, um, this is a butterfly. Now, people that get used to the butterfly will eventually come across something called thread the needle, which is as soon as the chuck passes from nine and three, you're gonna shift a, you're gonna shift a hand forward and right before the chuck, the other chuck hits your hand, you're gonna shift the other one forward and you can get this going forever and ever and you can just kind of push it through, threading a needle. I don't know, threading in the nunchuck? <laughs> I don't know. Bam, bam, we can punch. So threading the needle is basically, I'm gonna go nice and slow over here so you can hopefully see it. You're just kind of shooting your hand through to the point where this would almost hit and then we kind of move it out of the way. So, I mean, that's a really good transition, especially when you're going downwards because I haven't really gone over that. And again, if you do bounces like here, all of a sudden we're in weave, or if we're going to do bounces, we can do a double bounce, which will take us upwards, which will bring us back up to here. So if you bounce both of them, you'll be going the same direction, or uh, you'll be doing the same motion, but opposite direction. So if we're going counterclockwise, and obviously if we bounce them both, then they'll be both going clockwise. Okay, what else we got here? Can you do a one-handed butterfly? I mean, I haven't done it in a long time, and the problem is, is I have two different weights of chucks right now, but one, oh. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've done a one-handed butterfly, I have to say it, but. No! You found my weakness! Let me try one more time. Yes. No. I cannot do a one-handed butterfly at this particular moment. Maybe next week? <laughs> what up, Nunchuck Daddy? What up, Lionel? <laughs> How about short chains, three inches, or short ropes? Sure. Um, you know, I don't I don't I have them tucked away right now. But when you have the short chains or short ropes, like if my chuck was this long as opposed to this long, there's a huge difference. One is you won't be able to do some of the mo moves like chain unwinders, obviously, and wheels are a lot easier with a little bit longer rope. But at the same time, when it's shorter, like when we do something like stalls, like this here, if we're trying to stall a chuck, here, let me get more in the corner. When we try to stall a chuck, the less chain that you have, the more control you'll have over it. As well as the thing I just showed you with John Oswald, where he was moving the chuck with the back of his hand and through his elbow and stuff. Shorter, shorter is definitely has more control over that. So when you're doing doubles, a lot of times you can pull off some fantastic throws as well as like just stalls in general with with shorter rope, just because you have more control over it. The longer it is, the harder it is to maintain control, uh, to maintain control of it, especially when we stall or change direction. Um, yeah. So hopefully that helps. With with shorter, you you want to think about like control-based moves though. Uh, there's a lot of great things you can do. A lot of times your hand rolls have to be held lower than up here because your balance point pulls itself down. I generally don't use them too much just because I really like all the fun things, all the fun things you can do with the rope with a little bit longer, but it's all personal preference for that one. You can get some really intense speed with, with, shorter, with shorter rope. Let me see. Where do you pinch the chain to do the one chuck butterfly? Oh man, everyone's asking me these questions I haven't done in a long time. I mean, with the one chuck, if, if we're looking at that, let me see here, it's been a minute. <laughs> now, I'm gonna have to work on that one again. You guys, I haven't been working my butterflies much at all, but uh, it's kind of like the same as the regular butterfly. I usually throw it up and grab it with three fingers like that. And then once I grab it, I kind of twist my hand this direction. So. I throw the rope to land on the three fingers, and then I kind of twist it, kind of sideways to kind of offset them so they don't crash into each other. Problem is, is it's one of those moves I haven't done in a long time. The infinite wave is what I call it. Uh, so uh, there's sometimes what will happen is I'll either explore or discover a move, and I'll show it to you guys excitedly, and then I won't work on it again until someone asks me, and then it's like a year's past, and I'm like, huh, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot here. That's one thing you guys should know about me. I'm more of a mad scientist. Uh, I'm always working on new stuff. I always like to discover new stuff. So I don't always have everything perfected. Well, what I'm hoping to do is teach everyone else so they can perfect it and be awesome and then maybe, you know, join the Flowchicks channel and uh, they can teach it better. <laughs> it's not as fun, the combos are less. 
where do you, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna get back over here again. We are just about done with our live stream. All right, so we're just about done with our live stream. There's just a few more things I think to talk about. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to show you one thing just because I always wanted to, I always wanna show at least one technique of my own. So something that I find that not many people use is what I call the staircase, which is the ability to just, you're just doing a pass. The staircase is just a simple way to do a pass, but making it look visually appealing. So uh, the way to practice a staircase is, is as a, it's as simple as being in two underhand grips, okay? So our hands are both in underhand grips, letting the chuck spin in front, but don't let it actually spin a circle in front of you. So you don't want your hand to be in the way of the chuck. You need to kind of move your hand slightly away from it. And then your other hand is just gonna grab it like so, and then the other hand is gonna rip downward. You're gonna catch it like so. Eventually, you'll be able to feel a really nice flow with it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we're just gonna give it one circle like this, and then your hand's gonna pull down, and then you're gonna grab it again. Pull down and grab, pull and grab, pull and grab. Eventually what you'll do is you'll start it lower, and then you're gonna try to you're gonna try to catch it to where you're gonna catch it to where the the string is going perpendicular to the chucks. So for now you're just gonna kind of keep it at the same pace, but eventually this hand is gonna stay, the left hand's gonna stay still, and as this one comes up, we're gonna try to push this one up as high as we can and make the string perpendicular. This kind of almost makes like a lever, right? So here to here. And then the other hand's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna pull down and we're gonna catch it up to the top. This allows us to create almost like a ladder-like feature. Now, you can go the opposite way too. So if my right hand pushes down, it's gonna be the same, or pulls up. So my right hand, my left hand, oh, it's one of those days. <laughs> you just push up and then you grab it below, but we're doing the same thing. As soon as we grab it, we pull down and we try to keep the chucks facing exactly perpendicular of the rope. And what this will do is just create a nice little illusion that you can add, very simple, but also really cool. Just, it takes a little bit of practice to get a nice flow to go up and down. But I, I personally think it's, it's really neat. So, wanted to share that. Ah, okay, let me see here. Oh no, Hamid, I, can, I cannot show you a trick involving a dab. I'm sorry, I just can't do that. <laughs> Lionel says, I'm going to open up my own martial arts school in California someday and was hoping to book you for a nunchuck seminar. I would love to, yeah. No, just get a hold of me, send me an email, um, or just contact me through YouTube when you have your, your dojo up. I would love to uh, get more involved with the martial arts side of things, martial arts schools and whatnot. So just holler and uh, we'll set something up. Um, okay, well, with that said, I think that... Um, I just want to thank you all again. Um, definitely want to thank my Patreon sponsors too. So let me let me go over to the Patreon donors really quick here. Boom! I hope you guys can hear me okay. But if it wasn't for Patreon, these like this wouldn't exist. This is. Hold on one second. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm still checking to make sure that you guys can hear me. If it wasn't for my Patreon donors, uh, this live stream wouldn't exist, as well as the constant new videos. They've really helped me. So we got to give them kudos. All these people are awesome. Thanks so much. And uh, again, we're going to do another live stream next week. Don't forget, if you want your video featured, just go onto the flowtricks.net and then do hashtag FT live and post a video. And uh, I'm going to feature at least one, maybe a couple of them. So I want, you know, I'm always looking for new material and whatnot for it. And I hope this helps everyone. Just keep in mind, just about every Thursday we're going to do this. So if you have any good questions, this is the time to ask. I'm going to see if there's anything else. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys again. It's been amazing as always. And let's do it again next week. This is awesome. So till then, take care. Yeah. And talk to y'all soon.